I believe most of you are beginners here. So what I'll do is to give you the basics of R. And then of course, that is up to you how you take it forward and uh, how much, uh, remember always uh, in programming, it is the more you practice, the more you learn, right? And again, of course, uh, programming is all about customizing to your requirements. And that would require some basics and also a bit of, you know, uh, logical thinking. So let's get started and uh, we'll begin with a short presentation. So just to highlight why are we learning R. And then, of course, I'll take you through the uh, through the interface, uh, R Studio. And today we'll do the basic data types. So uh, first thing, of course, is why do we need to do programming, right? So uh, this is, I'm, I'm sure you know, Steve Jobs. And this is basically your... Uh, co-founder of Twitter and the Square, Jack Dorsey, and most of them, uh, and both of them basically uh, emphasize on the importance of programming here, right? So everybody in this country should learn to, pro learn to program a computer because it teaches you how to think, right? So all programming is about how do you translate what you want to do into a certain language that the computer can understand. So therefore, uh, it is important to learn a bit of programming. And today, as my technology moves into a data-driven you know uh, data-driven uh, science it is all the more important for everybody not just the bioinformaticians but also the regular students who do wet lab to get into programming at least the basics must be clear to them so that you can you know uh, process your data fast quicker and also uh, if you're going into ngs and other based technologies which obviously you'll go into because now everything begins at uh, next generation sequencing so which means then that you know you need to have the basic know-how of programming and then, of course, uh, uh, you have uh, Jake Dorsey who says, code teaches you how to face really big problems, right? And uh, there have been times when I have been coding the whole night trying to figure out how to work the best way out. And many a times when you write a program, the first thing is to get the output the way you want. And then you get about uh, thinking about how to make it memory efficient and space efficient, right? So we'll talk of this more as we go along. R, of course, if you know, you, you have a command line uh, uh, command line setup also, so you can directly do on your terminal. But uh, most people now prefer to do what is known as the R Studio. So what, what people now use is R Studio. What is R Studio? It is a integrated development uh, environment. So this is a better term for graphic user interface. And basically what people are trying to do here is to develop a basic syntax and a column and, and some integrated software so that it eases your way of doing R. It is not just a black terminal where you're using, you're using your codes and you're, you're basically, you know, running your program. This is a more sophisticated and a more easy way to take R forward, right? And so this includes a, a, a console, syntax highlighting editor that supports direct code execution, as well as tools for plotting, history, debugging, and workspace management. So this makes uh, life a little easier than doing it on the actual command line, right? So this is an interface that allows you to do uh, R programming a little more easily, a little more, you know, a little uh, more subtly, not the hardcore way. So let's get back to uh, why R. First important question is why, why are we doing R in the first place? So there are several reasons why R becomes important and takes a central stage today in, in biotechnology and elsewhere. Um, why I'm talking about biotechnology? Because we are largely biotechnology background, but it is not that it has been used only in biotechnology. It is used in everything uh, starting from engineering to, to every other field, right? So R is a statistical package for, for information. And why do you need a statistic? Because you have a large amount of data and you need to separate out the signal from the noise. So statistical tests allow you to, you know, uh, figure out what is the best information from the data that you can churn out. And they support your information that you're that you're finally uh, 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 inferring, right? So therefore, uh, let's see why R is so important. So one, it is developed by statisticians. It is an excellent, it is excellent for a statistical computing and analysis. And as we move into uh, big data analytics and biotechnology, statistics becomes again a center stage. And to apply statistics onto data, R is the way forward. Right? So you can also do it in Python, but R is specifically a, a software developed for you know a statistical analysis, and therefore it it it, it, it uses your life a lot more than any other uh, language can do. And then, of course, uh, there are other languages that are comparative. There are other statistical packages that are available. So you have MATLAB, 
MATLAB is also a statistical package, but that is a paid one. In contrast, R is open source and largely free, right? So R is an open source programming language. Anybody can contribute to its development. Anybody can do the quality control. And anyone can work with license without any license fee or, or, a, or a license requirement, right? And due to this, R has a huge community that contributes to its environment. And therefore, now we have what is uh, R Studio, which has been developed again by the community to facilitate uh, new beginners to uh, be able to work with R. Right? And then, of course, we'll, we'll get into the details as we go along. Uh, then, uh, if you look at this, uh, a large variety of specialized libraries are present. So, there are specialized and directed libraries for a specific type of functions. So, you may not need to do the hard coding all the time. You may directly call a library up into, into your program and the rest of the work will be done by the library itself. Of course, you need to know the nitty gritty of how to, uh, you know, input the data into the library, how to work out and, and other things. But generally, uh, uh, you have a large number of libraries available for specialized jobs and you don't really have to do the hard coding for everything. So that makes it even more easier to work. And then, of course, R Studio is there. It is a graphic user interface or an integrated development environment, which is easier to grasp and learn. It has cross-platform support, so R is available across platforms, and it is machine independent. You could work on any machine and on any platform, any operating system. And R is available, and you have a R you know, R Studio and a R, uh, you know, command line available for each of these operating systems and platforms. And then, of course, uh, R can do data cleansing, data wrangling, and then scrapping, right? So basically, uh, data cleansing, you know, so sometimes you may have an NA value in your data, which will otherwise confound your analysis. So you can remove that NA, or you can say that if there is an NA, ignore that NA value and take the rest of the values and measure the average and so on and so forth. I'm giving you very simple examples. So I'm typically a teacher, so I, I, I have this idea of, you know, taking a feedback every now and then to see uh, whether the students are following or not, or whether everything is going fine or not. So can do data cleansing, data wrangling, and web scraping. So R can collect data from the internet through web scraping and other means, right? It can also perform data cleansing. And uh, so I've told you, you can have your NA removed and you can, you can basically sort out and filter out data that you want. And it is also useful for data wrangling which is the process of converting raw data into desired format or easier for easier consumption. So one of the primary requirements today in biotechnology is like, let's say I'm using a third party software for my analysis. So the first thing is that the third party party software would take data in a specific format. So a lot of time goes into reformatting your data the way it is required by the third party. So that is what is data wrangling. And many a times in biotechnology, you'll be doing this very often. You start with one software, you do your analysis, the next software in line would require the data in a slightly different format. And therefore, you'd be doing your data wrangling. So R can help you do, do that as well. Uh, then, of course, uh, one of the important uh, important for the points with R is that R has what is known as uh, ggplot package, which is also known as the grammar of graphics package. And most of the graphics that you have, and, and you also know that today, uh, because the data is huge, a lot of research also goes into how to visualize your data better, right? And from your conventional graphs of column and lines, we have moved on to many other things like, you know, you have uh, surcos and you have many other heat maps and these and, and different types of graphs. So R has a, a, a utility here again. You have what is known as ggplot2 and ggplot2 can be used to basically develop quality graphics and visualizations which are required for your uh, for your uh, publication quality, right? So therefore, this is an added advantage that you have. And then, of course, uh, this is compatible with other programming languages. So R is compatible with other languages like C, C++, Fortran. So then, of course, if you move on, so compatible with other programming languages, R is compatible with other languages like C, C++, Fortran. Other languages like Net, Java, Python can also directly manipulate objects from R. So this is the interoperability of these uh, languages also allows you to take out uh, output from one particular program and take it back into R or the other way around. So that also is important. So that I have given you enough reasons to why you should be learning R. First, of course, it is a statistical package, a dedicated statistical package. It is free and it has a large number of, you know, specialized libraries. It has a 
graphic user interface that has a cross platform support. It can do cleansing, data wrangling, web scraping, powerful graphics. And of course, it is compatible with other such uh, you know uh, languages. So therefore, it allows for a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, interoperability. And then of course, it is compatible with high performance computing and big data analytics. This is where we are moving. Uh, I'm sure you would know that uh, big data. I'm sure you know it is characterized by velocity, veracity, and variety. And until now, social social media is the biggest data that is generated. But it is predicted that in the next five or ten years. Biotechnology will generate the maximum data. The biggest data will be generated in biotechnology. So therefore, uh, you need to take care of that as well, right? So and therefore, you need to be ready for that kind of uh, situation where you can actually, you know, take care of uh, or, or analyze data based on programming languages. Now, uh, one thing that you must know and uh, your expectations must be realistic. So not everything can be taught in a limited type of the workshop. You will not become an expert in R after attending this workshop, right? But of course, you will get a fair idea of R and if you're compatible with R. So one thing is, you know, not everybody is compatible with programming. So if you're not uh, into programming, if you, if you don't find it compatible, that's not a problem. But if you do put in the effort, you would slowly get the feel and the heck of it and, and you'd be, uh, you know, you'd be doing wonders. And I'm not a trained programmer for, for information. I learned programming during my PhD in CCMB. I had some spare time, so I started with Perl. And then, of course, uh, that was a savior for my PhD uh, because ultimately in my PhD, uh, I started with the wet lab, but then I moved into dry lab and published a pipeline for genomic rearrangement. So this could be an additional skill that could enhance your CV really well. Then learning will, uh, will come uh, when you have a real problem in hand, right? So what is also important is uh, when it comes to, okay, now you have to do it, that is when you really put in an effort and you do it, so it will come and when you have a real problem in hand, persistence and regular practice will make the learning curve a lot easier for you. So what is required is persistence and regular practice. It should not be that you learn a bit today and then for next two months, you don't uh, go back to your R studio and don't do anything. Then of course, you're not learning much, right? So you have to ensure that you keep going back and keep trying things and keep learning things. And a lot of online discussion forums, YouTube videos will come in handy if you make a sincere effort to learn. So ultimately, the onus is on you. So here is our uh, first thing. So how do you download the R Studio? So this is the link here. So this is your rstudio.com products R Studio download page here. And it says download the R Studio IDE. If you go down here, uh, it will show you to the version. And what you're supposed to download is the R Studio desktop version, which is an open source license and it is free, right? So that, that's the most important point, right? We're not supposed to pay anything here for the beginners. And of course, uh, when you take a commercial license, you'll have additional utilities, but for now, you can start with the free one and uh, that would work for you. And it is integrated tools for R. And if you go down here, you will have your uh, further, uh, how do you install? So it will suggest you what is best suited for you and then there are other operating systems, depending on which operating system you have, you can download this exe file, right? So for Windows 10, 11, this is the one. Mac OS, this is the one. Uh, uh, most of you would have Windows. Some of you may have had, uh, you know, some of you may have maybe fortunate enough to afford a Mac for now, so this is fine. And then of course, if, uh, if you are into Ubuntu or Debian, then this is the one. So Ubuntu is another uh, Linux, uh, you know, flavor, and uh, you can use that, Fedora or Red Hat, Again here, and then again for so Red Hat 8 is here. I don't think you'll have Red Hat or Fedora on the systems. At max, you should be either having Mac or Windows or Ubuntu, right? So you can download the, uh, the required file from here. So, uh, and once you've downloaded the file, the, this is an EXP file, you can directly double click on the file and that would allow you to install. You can just keep saying next, next, next and it would be able to install your R Studio, right? So you should be able to directly download and do clicks on it and you, it should be, you should be able to install directly there, right? And uh, then of course, once you have downloaded, you need to go to the search column here and type R Studio so that you have your R Studio. I can double click here and it will take me to R Studio. I say my R Studio is already open, so I'm taking you here. So when you uh, basically 
uh, install your R Studio and open it for the first time, it will look like this. 